Hi and welcome back to the third and final part of this uh, webinar collection all discussing the mastery of emotions. Now in the second part of the webinar we discussed the uh, 10 calls to action which is basically the 10 common emotions that most people feel the messages that those emotions are trying to give us and some of the actions and, and uh, perceptions that we can change to uh, resolve those actual emotions. Now what I'd like to talk to you about in this next section is the 10 emotions of power. Okay, and what I'd like to do is to use the analogy of a garden. How do we grow a beautiful, bountiful, luscious garden that's going to support and f encourage the development of even greater flowers and emotions and stuff like that? Well, initially we need to start sowing our seeds. So the 10 that I'm about to give you, I want to you to think of as seeds. And when we plant a seed, we want to plant it with love, warmth, and appreciation. We don't want to be planting it with disappointment, anger, or fear. So when we're planting them, we actually want to nurture this growth um, of all of these beautiful emotions, these 10 powerful emotions. And I want you to think of the action signals, which we've just discussed in the previous webinar, as weeds in our garden because we need to nip out these weeds quite quickly we need to deal with them as and when they pop up so that they don't start to overtake the garden and strangle our powerful emotions and we start to go back to the negative emotions so as soon as we see the weeds we need to whip them out and do something with them so the first seed that I want to give you is love and warmth okay the first number one of our emotional ten so the consistent of expression sorry the consistent expression of love and warmth from you as a person will help melt away the negative emotions of somebody else so say you're talking to somebody who was feeling quite angry or hurt over a situation if you were to consistently show them love and warmth then that would slowly erode the intensity of their anger and hurt and ultimately it would change their outcome and their, their um, feeling around the situation just really from you expressing love and warmth. The second one I want you to um, plant for me is appreciation and gratitude. To show appreciation and gratitude to someone or something is a beautiful way to live. It's something that I've changed over the last few years. I used to be you know, pretty self-centered and um, things like that, but then I suddenly realized that if I give more and I'm more appreciative of life in general and people, then I get much more back out of life. You know, I'm not giving to gain, I'm just giving because it feels good, and it does, it feels absolutely fantastic. If you could give a gift to somebody, um, how good does that make you feel? You know, you've taken the time to think of them, to think of a suitable gift, and then to gift it to them. Or you could just be showing appreciation for how you've been treated. It goes as simple as somebody holding the door open for you. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Don't just grab the door and walk on through. Actually say thank you. Engage with the other person. They're a human being and they are holding the door open for you. Okay, so a little bit of appreciation shown every day for everything. When you go to a shop, please can I have... Thank you very much, okay? Even though you're paying money for it, still a human being on the other end. So a little bit of appreciation. You could just be appreciative that you've actually woken up for the day. You've woken up for the day and you're breathing. You're in this beautiful world and you're still part of it. Appreciate and be grateful for the fact that you're still there. Living in this emotional state will enhance your life more than anything else I know. And it's so true. It is. Live with an attitude of gratitude. Curiosity is the third seed I would like to give to you to plant. And if you really want to grow in your life, and l you need to learn to be as curious as a small child. Okay? You really do, because when you're curious about something, it's not a chore anymore. Now, I am always developing as a life coach. And for me, studying is just you know, part of my life, lifelong learning. I love it. It's great. But one of the things that I was really struggling with was reading. And I thought, oh, I hate reading. But there's all these books that I, I need to read. Because all the information that I, I want is inside these books. But because I'm really curious about becoming the best life coach that I can be, 
I then needed to read the books. Now reading isn't a problem because I'm like, it serves me. It's great. I want to be part of this. So by being curious, you're actually enjoying it rather than it becoming a chore. It becomes the fire in your belly. It becomes the fuel for you actually wanting to do something. So if you want to understand who they are, what they are, why they are, where they are, what they're thinking, what's it all about, that's curiosity. And that's going to make the difference between just living your life and actually learning about life and being part of life. So get curious. The fourth seed that I'd like to give you is excitement and passion. Passion can turn any challenge into a tremendous opportunity. Okay? If you turn up and you've been given a job and you're not overly excited about it, just think of where it could lead. Have you been in situations where you've actually done something that you're not overly enjoying and then the next thing, boom, you've met somebody, you talk to somebody, something else has changed and it's changed the direction of your life. It's the unbridled power to move your life forward at a faster tempo than you've ever been before. If you were to take your excitement and passion, bundle it up, it would be such a powerful little ball of stuff. Okay? Just imagine giving that to somebody as a gift. Excitement and passion. Here you go. Have that. How good would that make you feel? So how do we get excitement and passion? The same way we get love, warmth, appreciation, gratefulness and curiosity. We feel it. Okay? It's inside us. You need to use your physiology. So your actual being. Speak more quickly. Visualize images moving forth faster. Move your body in the direction that you want to go. Get excited about it. Start moving. All right? Really raise your passion. Raise your voice. Talk fast. That's how you get passion. That's how you get it. You feel it. Or we could just go to, how do I get passion? Well, you just talk about it. And you visualize things in your mind a little bit more. And you move forward. Can you see the difference there? You know, just in the voice. If you start to talk about things that you enjoy and you love, you become passionate about them and you'll notice that your voice gets really fast and you're confident, you're talking about it, and before you know it, boom, you're excited about it and everybody else is excited around you. So don't just sit on your ass and expect it to come to you. You've got to get up and go and do it. Which leads me on to determination. All of the previous emotions or the seeds that I've given you are invaluable. But there's one that you must have if you want to create a lasting change in this world, your world. Determination. Determination is the difference between being stuck and being struck with the power of a lightning to reach your desired outcome. It's what really fires you up. It's what gives you the energy to go forward and do the mundane stuff. Okay? So, for example, if you're thinking about losing weight or giving up smoking, or making more business calls at work. You need to be in a total state of determination. It is no good, January the 1st is an ideal opportunity when you say, okay, this year I'm going to lose some weight. How do you feel about that? Yeah, might happen. It's completely different to, I am totally determined this year that I am going to lose some weight. Because when it comes down to the nitty gritty, it's the determination and your desire to achieve that goal that's going to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. And to take you through those tough times. To take you through the stuff that you don't really want to do. It's the, it's the energy, the power that's going to get you there. If you're not, you'll end up living a life of mediocrity, frustration, disappointment, and you'll be back on the same old merry-go-round. Remember where you were? Yep. You know where you were. Do you really want to be there? Or have you got enough determination and fire in your belly to actually make the difference? Now, on top of all of this, you need to remain flexible. And this is the sixth seed that I want to give you. Flexibility is the key to absolutely everything in your life. If you've got such a rigid path and you're going to follow it, then the first brick wall that you come to, you're going to stop because you haven't got the flexibility to go over, under, up, around, upside down, do whatever you need to do to get past that wall. Flexibility in your planning 
will give you the opportunity to be able to walk along the path, see that there's a brick wall in front of you and say, right, I am going left, I'm going to box around it, or I'm going right and I'm going to go around it, or I'm actually going to start digging a tunnel and I'm going to go underneath it. But whatever it is, I'm flexible enough to change my plans and get back on course again to achieve my desired outcome. You need to be able to zig when the rest of the world is zagging. You need to be able to see different ways for the same outcome. You need to be able to adjust your course to stop a collision from happening. And the flexibility will allow you to cultivate your emotions and then you will surely develop the one thing that everybody wants, which is confidence. Unshakable confidence is a sense of certainty that we all want. Everybody would love to have the confidence to be able to do things, to go into a room full of people, um, to do a bungee jump, to do whatever it is that they want to do. And the only way we're going to have this is to embrace the power of faith. And we've already discussed faith during these webinars. And this is where you've got that self-belief, where you know that you've prepared and you've done enough that you can to achieve your desired outcome. And how do we do this? Through my old friend, visualization. I will be doing a webinar on visualization, but at the moment, you just need to visualize how you're going to achieve things. How are you going to take that next step? What it is that you've got to do? And by visualizing situations and scenarios and strategies, they will become second nature. So when it actually comes to the time to do them, boom, you know how to do them because it's already in your head. You've scratched that record. You've made that neuro-linguistic pathway ready so that when it happens, you can just walk down it. So for an example, if I asked you, are you able to tie your shoelaces? Within a heartbeat, you'd say, yeah, of course I can tie my shoelaces. What do you think I am? Stupid? Why? Why can you tie your shoelaces? Because you've done it over and over and over again. I bet even if we blindfolded you and gave you a pair of shoes, you'd still be able to put them up on and tie them up with your eyes closed and the blindfold on. So, practice your confidence by using it consistently. Number eight. The seed that I'd like to give you is cheerfulness. This seed, when planted, will provide you with self-esteem. You'll make more fun out of life by being cheerful. And that, in turn, will reflect out to people around you. Have you noticed that when you're happy, people around you are happy? When you've come home after work and you're in a grumpy, foul mood, is everybody else in a grumpy, foul mood? They might not have been until they met you, but you've reflected that you're having a bad day, and they're like, Poof, I don't want any of this, so I'm going to be grumpy with him. So being cheerful has the power to eliminate the feelings that we've discussed earlier on. Those of fear, hurt, anger, frustration, disappointment, depression, guilt, inadequacy. You can get rid of all of those from your life by cheerfulness. Now, I'm not saying that you need to put it on, all right, and just go, oh, yeah, I'm cheerful. Actually, be cheerful. Be cheerful about things around you, things that you've achieved, the fact that you've woken up and you're alive. Okay, being cheerful is a sign of great intelligence. And I'm going to tell you, because it's because you live in a state of your choosing. You're living in a state of cheerful. So intense that you transmit the joy that you've got to those around you. The same as the grumpy person coming home from work. But you've chosen to feel cheerful. You've chosen not to let the emotions get on top of you. Okay? Because you can manage your emotions because we've just discussed them. Now, vitality. This is seed number nine. And handling this area is absolutely critical. You need to nurture your vitality and your own body's physiology. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult to enjoy the emotions that you're currently planting. So these, these ten emotions of power. If you're not looking after your body and you're not using your physiology to be able to empower yourself and if you think back to the very first um, exercise that we did in the free session which was about being slumped down and not being able to see I can hardly talk at the moment because I can't breathe all right I'm not getting the oxygen into my body but if I stand up and I take deep breaths my whole body feels energized and that's what we're talking about and that's just one example of how you can control your vitality and once your garden is filled with these emotions then you can share the bounty of contribution. Contribution, the secret to living is giving. 
you can harvest some of your emotions because you've now grown them and you know how powerful they are and you can start handing them out to people just like your cheerfulness you can radiate it out to people there is no richer emotion than the sense that who you are as a person is having a positive impact on others and we're not just talking friends and family we could be talking strangers have an act of kindness if you see somebody struggling go and help them for example, if you see a young mum who's got a couple of toddlers and a baby and she's trying to get the pram onto the bus and you're just stood there huffing and puffing and going, oh, flipping it, get on the bus, will you? Can't be that difficult. Why don't you go and help them? That lady will be eternally grateful. She's probably got heaps of other problems at the moment and just the gratitude and the help of you going over there and saying, can I help you, madam? Maybe take her shopping on board the bus. Maybe offer to... Uh, push, lift the pram up onto the bus. Just that small act will make the difference to her day. And I'm sure you've been helped out in situations when you've needed it as well, and you've been equally as grateful. So please, use these emotions every day. Watch how your life will grow with vitality and abundance in a way that you've never dreamed of. It's true. It does. I'm living proof. I used to be a terrible person, to be honest. Now I've changed and I've started to use these 10 powers of emotion and my life has got so much better. That's pretty much it. That is the end of the Mastery Workshop. However, what I would like you to do is a little bit of homework just so that we can cement this so that you really take value from this webinar that you've taken the time and the effort to sit down and listen to, which I'm really grateful for. So over the next few days, what I would like you to do is if at any point you feel any disempowering or negative emotions, I would like you to follow the six steps of emotional mastery. I would like you to identify what category it belongs in. Recognize its value in the giving message. Discover what needs to change, whether your perceptions or your actions, or maybe both. Get confident, get certain, and get excited. Use these emotions of power. Use those ones of, I've just given you to plant in your garden. Use them daily. Make them become a habit. Make them become your way of life. Scratch the record so you don't even realize that you're doing it. Readjust your neuro-linguistic pathways by scratching the record and doing them daily. And before you know it, you probably won't even realize that you're doing them. So whenever you start to feel bad, ask the question. Change the record. <coughs> Stop your thinking. Take a step back. What else could this mean? Is this what I think it is? By doing that, you are taking the first steps to controlling your emotions. And if you take enough of these first steps, you will start to master your emotions. And you will suddenly realize that all of those 10 calls to actions will start to become much easier. You will be weeding your garden as soon as they pop up and you'll be nurturing the 10 powerful emotions that I've just given you and you'll start to live by those and your life will change abundantly. So remember, every emotion that you have, good or bad, is based on your interpretation of what things mean to you. Not to anybody else, but to you. Once again, I'd like to thank Tony Robbins for his um, contribution to my learning, which has enabled me to build this webinar so that I can share my learnings with you. And then you can go on and share these with your friends, your families and your colleagues at work. Just leaves me now to say goodbye and good luck. I'm sure that you will make a positive difference with what it is that you've just been exposed to. I look forward to sharing my next learnings with you in my next webinar. But for now, my name is Steve Barker, and I'm from Home Enough Coaching, and we've completed the webinar on Mastering Emotions. Take care, and goodbye.